Hey, you guys. So uh, I think this is just going to be a, a standard thing that I record a little video debrief of the laboratory adventure at the end of every week. Um, what, I, I guess it's actually Sunday morning right now, and so your lab work is already due. I haven't actually gone in and graded it, but I have a couple of comments just based on some questions that I got throughout the week, and um, I did grade your lab group discussions, and so I kind of have a sense of, of how you utilize those, but I haven't gone in to actually grade your lab notebook reports yet. So I probably, you know, pay attention to the comments that you get from me around the lab report because I haven't looked at them, so I'm not going to address anything um, in this little conversation. But I made myself a list so I wouldn't forget the things that I wanted to tell you. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the lab prep. Um, what is true is, well, there's like 8,000 things that are true. First of all, in my world, like, I feel like I'm doing a service by offering this class online. It, it isn't my, like, I don't feel like, oh, teaching general biology online is, like, the way to teach it. Like, it's better than teaching it face-to-face. -face. Um, I feel like, there are certain circumstances in which the opportunity to take this class online is super convenient. It, um, it addresses a need because I do think that it's easier to take this class um, face to face because of the lab. If there wasn't the lab component of this thing, I think I would probably have a different opinion about that. But because of the lab and my unwillingness to, um, like, eliminate the labiness of the lab, there's, there's, there's a trade-off. And I'm assuming that you're here taking this lab, online lab, because it, it fills a need that you have. It's early. We haven't even reached census yet. And so, honestly, if you're in a place where you're like, dude, seriously, like these labs, I can't hang with this kind of prep. I can't hang with this amount of time. Um, do a really serious, like, self-analysis and decide, I'll let you in. I mean, really, honestly, I'll let you in. I'll have to discuss with other instructors to see if there's space in their classes, but I will make space for you in my face-to-face -face class if you feel like you need a face-to-face -face experience for this class. Um, if you stick out the online place, like this week's lab on camp, like there are a bunch of labs that are going to be like that. They're kitchen labs. Lab three? is not kitchen, ingredient, grocery, like nothing. Like you get to sit in front, and maybe that's what you envisioned the labs were going to be like. They were going to be these virtual, like, simulations. And um, that's not what I envisioned that the labs would be like. I actually feel like, you know, we're doing a microscope lab this week, and so um, it's all this virtual thing, and I'm, Man, I'm real interested to see what you think of it and what I think of it. But the experience of having to go through a grocery list, like, you're going to have that experience again. The experience of doing the lab work without me standing there answering your questions, that's the way it's going to be. No that dudes, you guys have access to, I can go show you, but in every single module at the bottom of the module is the questions for RIGS discussion board. Shoot me questions there. If you get stuck on something, and if you're um, stuck on something, 
go put your questions there so that you can see uh, what other people are getting stuck on. Take advantage of your lab groups to um, brainstorm ideas and figure out where supplies are coming from and what the results are because I'm trying to create a social um, experience for you in this online setting. And I, I, I'm doing some and you got to do some too and then you got to holler at me if you have questions. Okay, so the whole point of that is, yes, there will be labs where there will be that kind of prep. In the future, here's what I'm going to do for you. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I am going to work really hard when I know that there is a big prep coming up. I'm going to work really hard to get it published sooner than I would otherwise get it published. So lab four, there's going to be prep for lab four. I am going to work really hard at the beginning of this week to get lab four ready to go for you so that you can see what the grocery list is and, and have more than just a weekend or whatever. That said, I promise they will always be done by Friday before the next week that they're happening. And, and that gives you almost a week to um, get stuff together. So you be proactive, I'll be proactive, holler at me if you need something. Group discussions. Oh, I'm happier with the Muddy Fun discussions this week. I feel like they were a little more valuable. I'm curious to see what you guys thought of it. But the lab discussions, there were a couple of people engaging in lab conversations that were awesome. Um, but for the most part, they were very superficial and definitely not what I was envisioning. Um, so I am percolating on how to improve the quality of that, and I'm also percolating on how to hold you accountable um, in, unless you literally barely participated. I pretty much gave you full credit. That's not going to last. That is, that's while I'm figuring out how to coach you toward or how to teach you how to um, engage in those discussions um, in a more meaningful way. But think about that and, like, really try to make use of the discussion to help you learn. The level of the discussion makes me really worried about um, the exam that's coming up, not this week, but next week. So um, I think that that's something that you guys need to sort of um, look at and think about for yourselves. Um, there were a couple of content things related to this lab number two that I wanted to address. Um, some things that I'm, I saw in multiple discussion boards that were an issue. First of all, um, blood pH, carbon dioxide plus water, and, and you guys saw this when you blew bubbles in your cabbage juice. And if it didn't work for you, some people reported out that that didn't work. You know, take the data from somebody for whom it did work, and you can try to figure out why it didn't work. But the bottom line is that if you bubble carbon dioxide through water, you will form carbonic acid, and so the pH should decrease because the solution is becoming more acidic. If carbon dioxide combined with water becomes acidic, if you hold your breath, you're actually increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood because you're not getting rid of it. You're not ventilating it away. So holding your breath increases the acidity of your blood, which is all bad. Literally, your blood is held within a range of 7.35 to 7.45 on the pH scale. Like it's, you're amazing. Your kidneys take care of it. There's buffers in your blood. And then breathing takes care of maintaining your blood pH. So if you hyperventilate, if I'm breathing out really fast, I'm actually going to um, breathe off the carbon dioxide. So I'm decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in my blood because I'm breathing it off so fast. And that actually increases your pH because you're getting rid of acid, so your blood becomes more basic. That's why if you hyperventilate, you become lightheaded. That's why breathing into a bag is helpful, although for some reason not 
um, suggested or whatever by healthcare people. Um, but it's helpful because you actually, you're breathing out too much carbon dioxide. If you breathe into a bag, you're going to breathe that carbon dioxide back in. So you're going to, you're going to bring, you're going to make your blood more acidic because you are making it basic by getting rid of all that carbon dioxide. I hope that makes sense. Um, give me a holler if it doesn't because um, we can continue to discuss it. It's definitely uh, something that will be present on your exam. Um, there was a question about, okay, so part four of the lab talked about hydrophilic substances and hydrophobic substances. Salt is definitely hydrophilic, water loving. Sugar totally hydrophilic. Anything that dissolves in water is hydrophilic, and sugar absolutely dissolves in water. So um, something oily, fatty would be hydrophobic. And um, that lab four was asking you to um, identify some substances. For example, um, any, like, uh, what's that? Food coloring. Food coloring mixes with water, and, and so it is a hydrophilic substance. And if you dripped food coloring through your little um, oil and water tubes or glasses or what, however you set that up, um, it would actually go through the oil and dissolve and diffuse into the water below the oil. Something like, okay, uh, vitamin, Oh, what is it? It's, it's orange. It's like vitamin B6 or something like that. There's this orange pill. Beta carotene would be a, a lipid soluble substance that has some color to it. And if you dripped that into the oil substance, it actually would dissolve in the oil. It wouldn't drip down like the, um, like the food coloring did. It would stay in the oil because it is hydrophobic. And now my, my goal was for you to find something, like experiment with it and find something that dissolved in the oil and find something that dissolved in the water. If it dissolves in the oil, it's hydrophobic. If it dissolves in the water, it's hydrophilic. So that's your test. That, that was the take home for that one. I'm not sure how we um, did on that. I also talked about um, the cell membrane. This is something that, you know, we're talking about the cell on Monday, Tuesday next week, and we're talking about the cell membrane on Wednesday, Thursday next week. So um, it's it, that set of questions about the cell, how is the cell membrane both hydrophilic and hydrophobic, that's like you'll get there, you'll get that information. So don't let that go away from your brain. I'm going to give you a little uh, heads up that, the cell membrane is made out of phospholipids. And phospholipids have a hydrophobic part, which is the lipid part. And the lipid part is sandwiched in the middle of this bilayer that makes up your cell membrane. The phospho's are hydrophilic. They like water, and they're on the outside and the inside. So you end up with this sandwich of hydrophobic stuff surrounded or sandwiched by hydrophilic stuff. And when you watch that part of the lecture next week, um, I think that piece will kind of come clear. There is no question that, I mean, in a face-to-face -face format, general biology is not for the weak at heart. Like it is, it's a, it's a hardcore class, and the standards are high and the content is intense. And I personally find it fascinating and super cool and, like, an awesome class to teach. I get really excited. Did you know this about me yet? But, um, it, like, you got to probably pick up your game. That's my general sense of the situation. Like, pick up the game, you guys, because uh, our first exam is coming up in less than, well, I guess it's a week. I don't know what it is, but it's like next week. So like a week and a half from now, I think. Not next week, but the week after that. Not week three, week four. Okay, I got there. All right, so keep your head up. 
holler at me if you need something. You can do this. I'm going to give you another pep talk in just a second because I'm going to talk about uh, week three. <laughs>